The story of identity through food is the quest behind my journey. An attempt, if you like, to understand Jordan's culture through what its people eat. A visitor's first impression of Jordan may be of a desert land inhabited by Bedouin travelers searching for water and life. Camels and tents completing this picture postcard image. And though that image may have existed 100 years ago, it certainly does not do justice to the place. Established in 1921 as a British mandate, Jordan as a state is new. The land, however, is ancient. Amphitheatres, churches and mosaics stand as proof to Roman, Byzantine and Nabataean cultures. Today, the population of Jordan is 6.2 million. Palestinians who've migrated from their homes into Jordan as a result of Israeli occupation outnumber East Bank Jordanians. The Circassians and Armenians account for 2% of the population. Over time, each culture kept its distinct identity. Food played a big role in maintaining that. Now, to what extent did these culinary traditions continue and survive? I decided to visit three dominant cultures within Jordan to find out. I went to speak to a Palestinian Jordanian writer, Noha Batron, about what elements, in her opinion, influenced the area's cuisine. Jordan and Palestine, especially, have the same kind of uh, food because they have the same type of weather, they have the same type of vegetables and fruits, so they, they uh, have the same cooking. Basically, uh, people in the past used to depend on drying the food so that they can use it the whole of the year. But basically, I find that what is so special about our food in this area is the herbs, uh, spices, um, fresh vegetables, fresh meat uh, or chicken. Um, it's a mixture of all these. Also, the nuts, the different kind of nuts. The whole area was um, the, the route to go to the Far East and to India and to China and the Silk Road is known. So yes, it was open to um, commerce with different countries. It was important for me to see what Jordan's national dish was. And to do so, we decided to visit Sheikh Arif, who promised us just that. This is the Bedouin's house, and here's the tent. <laughs> the uniqueness of the Bedouins lies in their relationship with the desert. It formed their values and nature. 
And of course, the Bedouins have inhabited the desert lands around Jordan for hundreds of years. All this has changed, as you can see. I spoke to Sheikh Arif about life in the past. كانت البلاد العربية كلها تقريبا بادية الشام والجزيرة العربية وكلها عبارة عن قبائل القبائل هذه ترتاد الصحراء في جميع المناطق يعني صحراء الجزيرة العربية وصحراء بادية الشام وكان تكوين المجتمع بهذيك الأيام أكثر قبلي وعشائر كلها فحياتهم كانت تعتمد على طبعا المراعي وعلى تربية الحلال والأغنام والإبل ويتنقلوا فيها من مكان إلى مكان وهي مصدر عيشهم الوحيد I had heard a lot about Jordan's national dish, the mansaf. So I asked the sheikh if we could see it for ourselves. مكونات المنسف اللحم واللبن الجميد يعني يتحول من جميد إلى سائل وخبز الشراك اللي تصنعه النسوة بالبيت اللي هو مصنوع من مادة القمح هذه مكونات المنسف. ازدادت فيما بعد مع تطور الزمن صار يضاف له سنوبر ولوز وتحسينات أخرى موجودة في زمننا الموجود حاليا. The yogurt ingredient is unique in that it is actually the leftover goat's milk that is strained for butter. There's also the semen, Arabic for fat, which gives Jordanian cooking its traditional, authentic flavor. Now all this is very interesting, but why cook with such heavy ingredients? المنسف يعني كانت تفرض الظروف الموجودة بهذيك الأيام. يعني هذيك الايام تعرفي لا سوبر ماركت ولا محلات ولا رايحه لذلك مقومات المنسف كانت هي من الشيء الموجود بين ايدين البدو شيخ عارف سمام مريم had her own explanation about the dried yogurt stones والله بس انه قبل على النار نطبخ على يطبخ على النار قبل ما في غذاء يطبخوا على النار قبل ونخف على دينا اللبن نسوي بسعن يعني من جلد الغنم نسوي ونحطه بظل ثلاث ايام ما يشوف الشمس احسن ما يتكاثر يعني و... وبعدين نطلعه بالشمس يعني احسن للحام اليوم كنا قبل نرحل وننزل وشيء The Bedouins have special rules and ways in which the guest ushers the start and end of a meal and the left hand is always placed behind the back It was clear that the mensaf as a dish intertwines with the identity of a Bedouin's life. Basic ingredients for a basic and harsh life. More than half of the population in Jordan is of a Palestinian origin. And so their Mediterranean culture influenced the food climate here. Half of the Palestinians live away from their home in what is known as a Palestinian diaspora. The other half continues to live in today's Israel, the West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem. The notion of a home to a Palestinian conjures up feelings of melancholy and despair. However, tucked away at the back of that memory are smells of childhood. I spoke to Noha about her own memories of food. Especially in winter, uh, they used to sell what is known as um, sahlab. And the vendor would call Sahlab Sukhon, Sahlab Sukhon. And of course, we'll go outside and uh, buy that. When I was young, um, uh, there were no fridges and there were no vegetables all the year round, only vegetables in their own season. So we used to do a lot of uh, work at home. Like uh, when it's the time of for tomatoes, which usually is summer, they will uh, squeeze the tomatoes and they put them in trays and they send them, they send me with the trays up on the roof. They cover it with uh, uh, soft material and we put it in the sun to dry. 
um, later on they will check if it's dry enough and then they put it in uh, bottles to keep them for the whole year. If Mansaf is Jordan's national dish, I needed to learn what is considered to be Palestine's. It depends where you come from. Uh, some villages they cook uh, msakhan, which is basically chicken with uh, uh, olive oil and um, uh, onions, and uh, they put it all in a, in a on piece of uh, fresh uh, bread, uh, special certain kinds of bread. And um, in Jerusalem, for example, they are known for their mahshi. Uh, in some villages like Batir, also mahshi is a, the local uh, dish. In Jaffa, I would say maybe um, fish. So the sun, fat, for the Bedouins is what the olive oil is for the Palestinians. Nuha whetted my appetite for msakhan, and so off I went looking for the best msakhan I could find in Amman. This shop has a reputation that exceeds its size. Run by the two brothers Yanis and inherited from their father, they've kept the tradition and managed to maintain its standard. In this tiny kitchen, we're about to witness the preparation for msakhan. The ingredients are chicken, bread, olive oil, and onions. And I mean a lot of onions boiled in a lot of oil for a long time. The onions are then mixed with the ground sumac berries, placed on a special kind of bread, baboon, topped with grilled chicken and pine nuts. I asked Ibrahim about the msakhan. It became clear to me that both Jordanian and Palestinian dishes are cooked using one's instinct. There are no measurements, just tradition and instinct. Having had a taste of the Bedouin and Palestinian kitchens, it was time to learn about the Circassians and see if food is such an obvious feature in their culture. The late 19th century saw the expulsion of a Muslim population from Circassia as a result of the Russian Circassian War. Deported to the Ottoman Empire, many Circassians settled in Turkey, Jordan, Syria and Palestine. Arriving in Jordan as early as 1878, the Circassians worked hand in hand with the Bedouins to support the birth of a new monarchy in Jordan. Today, there are 90,000 Circassians living around the kingdom. I asked Amjad Jamoka about the extent to which the Circassians have integrated into Jordanian society. The Circassians have been in Jordan for some 140 years now. Uh, they came here uh, in the first wave of immigration in 1878. Uh, during this time, okay, uh, they have been divorced from their mother culture in the Caucasus. And uh, it is inevitable that during this time, okay, 
some kind of cultural assimilation should happen with the dominant society in Jordan. According to Amjad, food plays a significant role in the Circassian culture. Food was part and parcel of Circassian culture, customs and traditions and rituals. Okay, And uh, uh, in the rituals, the Circassians had their own rituals, pre-Islamic rituals. Each ritual had its own special, different kind of dish. I was so curious by then to see for myself the kind of dishes that could be associated with rituals. So I paid a visit to the Circassian Benevolent Association that runs a gourmet kitchen selling Circassian food. الشبس وباسطة مكونة من ثلاث أشياء رئيسية اللي هي الدجاج بيكون متوم بعد ما يطبخ ويسوي بالتوم بالتوم الباسطة اللي هي عبارة عن برغل بنطبخ زي الرز تقريبا يعني بنعجن بنعجن بخشبة خاصة فيه وبتقطع بهاي الطريقة الشبس هو عبارة عن مرقة الدجاج مع التوم مع الجوز والطحين القمح المحمص بنعمل بطريقة زي الصوص وبنحط عليه اللي بنسميه شبجي داغة اللي هو السمنة بتكون محمر بتتحمس سمنه وبنحط لها فلفل احمر حار شبشي داغا شبجي داغا شبجي داغا وهذا اسمه وال... هذا اسمه قشبط بالشركسي هيك الاسم بس هو عباره عن عدس مجروش بنطبخ مع توم وملح لحتى يستوي مضبوط بعدين بنحط على الوجه بصل مقلب السمنه وبرضه هذا بنسميه شبجي داغا معه فلفل احمر حار يعني لاحظت هون في شبجي داغا <تصفيق> وهون في شبجي داغا كل الاكلات فيها شبجي داغا حتى عندنا اكله ثانيه اللي هي the Circassians had two kinds of drinks. Uh, the first kind uh, I call beverages. Beverages refer to uh, drinks that have alcohol in them. The most famous Circassian drink is Mahsima or Bahsima, okay, and uh, Maramaje. Uh, the Circassians, like other people of ancient cultures, had also wine. White wine, Sanah, and red wine, Sanapi, okay, and they also brewed beer. They called it Syrah. So basically, these are the beverages of the Circassians. As for the uh, other drinks, non-alcoholic drinks, uh, the main drink readily associated with the Circassians is qalmaqti, qalmaqshe. This qalmaqti was a very unusual thing to drink, where you would expect a sweet tea you taste sourness. The most dominant ingredient is red pepper, okay? You almost add it with every dish, okay? Why is that? Uh, uh, it's because, first, it gives a very nice taste. It improves the palate, okay? Plus, the way Circassians serve it is with oil, okay? or with uh, fat. And this way, okay, you combine high energy source with palate. As I learned more about the Circassians, I started to realize that I've only touched upon the surface of what is a rich culture. Embedded within it, traditions of music and dance that date back to the Christian chants of the 5th and 6th century.
So far, within this small kingdom, I have tried big meals that go with big occasions to celebrate complex cultural identities. What about simple fast food on the go? Does it exist? Well, it turns out that sandwich shops are a big thing here. We've ended up at the Al-Quds cafeteria, which translates to Jerusalem Cafe. For the Sars family, who are falafel vendors, they've been in the business of chickpeas for 35 years. Falafel is a staple food in this part of the world. It's really a poor man's version of a steak sandwich. It's cheap and nutritious. Now, where a hip vegetarian would pay five pounds for the sandwich in any Sunday market in London, we pay less than one-fifth of that. And believe me, this is the real thing. I spoke to Abu Ali, who has worked here for over 30 years. He would not let a word about the recipe. It's a family secret, he says. Ah, well, at least I tried. If food is a mirror of a society's identity, then Jordan's is one that oozes diversity. The gastronomic traditions of Jordan and Palestine continue to be celebrated against all the changes and challenges that face this part of the world. For the Circassians, who already form a minority, the challenges are greater. Despite the fact that nowadays we hear about a few Sakashian dishes, in the olden days of Sakasha, okay, uh, there were thousands of dishes. Okay, one Sakashian scholar, okay, has collected two thousand dishes of the Sakashians. Okay, so what we have today of Sakashian. Uh, cuisine is a pale imitation of the glorious past. This unique and rich culinary identity is facing the danger of disappearing altogether in the future. It remains to be seen if the young generation is able to salvage some of that heritage.